from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. Just crazy. It was like, not normal. I mean, I've worked at Walmart for a long time, and I've never, you know, been afraid or feared anything. But the look on his face, it was definitely, it was not right. Tonight, an exclusive, terrifying account of what happened during that deadly Grand Forks Walmart shooting last week from the woman who survived it. Thanks for joining us. Lisa Braun was shot in the shoulder and is recovering at home now after being released from the hospital. Another Walmart employee, Greg Wyland, was shot and killed. The shooter, Grand Forks Airman Marcel Willis, took his own life after shooting Wyland and Braun. Now Valley News Team's Neil Carlson has Lisa Braun's eyewitness account of the shootings. Police say it happened within seconds after the shooter, Marcel Willis, walked into this Walmart. Lisa Braun says she was standing next to Greg Wyland near the front of the store. Yeah, I, really, I didn't see a gun and I heard a shot and it missed me. I must have ducked or tried to move out of the way and he shot again and he hit me in the shoulder. Well, you know, a second later, that's when he shot at Greg and hit him. Just turned around and was like walking towards the deli and that's where he shot at the other associates which he missed and then I assume that's where he shot himself. Braun says she clearly remembers the terrifying expression on the shooter's face. She says his face was so contorted she couldn't even recognize him compared to the photos of him she saw on television. Just crazy. It was like not normal. I mean, I worked at Walmart for a long time, and I've never, you know, been afraid or feared anything, but the look on his face, it was definitely, it was not right. Brown says the shooter, Marcel Willis, also did a bizarre thing while all this was happening. Each time before pulling the trigger, he would yell a word. Each time that he, before he fired, he yelled a word. I don't remember what it was. But I heard him yell that word, and I heard the gun shot, and I don't know what happened after that. At this point, no one yet knows what motivated Marcel Willis to commit this senseless act that's left Lisa Braun a bit scared of the world. A little bit, because I think about it once in a while, you know, if I'm out, you know, you, don't, you never know if it can happen again. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Now, police say the preliminary toxicology report on the shooter, Marcel Willis, will be released tomorrow morning. It should determine whether Willis was under the influence of drugs or alcohol at the time of the shooting. Meanwhile, extra security has been temporarily added at both Grand Forks Walmart stores. Well, to our weather now, very windy out there today, and we have some word on severe weather moving into our region as the night goes on. Let's head over to Hutch Johnson to see what we should be preparing for tonight. Hutch? Uh, first and foremost, letting everyone know a tornado watch is in effect for our western counties in southeast North Dakota. This includes Valley City. It includes Jamestown, as well as the New Rockford area and portions near Ellendale and Lisbon until 10 o'clock tonight. There is a risk for an isolated tornado or two. Also, some thunderstorms that develop tonight could contain some damaging straight line winds. We see a few starting to form one very strong cell south of Bismarck. But in our neck of the woods, northwestern Stutzman seeing some development moving towards Carrington. These storms producing some lightning and heavy wind and some storms starting to produce more and more lightning in Nelson County moving towards the Michigan area as well as along and no, near Grafton and Park River at this time, quite a bit of lightning. Temperatures in the 70s for the next couple of hours. We'll keep our eyes on the skies, but yes, I'm expecting a little more development as we head toward the uh, sunset hours. We'll have details on your hour-by-hour -hour forecast here in just a few moments. All right, Hutch, thank you. And you can stay up to date on this changing weather and all the conditions anytime on your smartphone or tablet. All you have to do, download the Storm Team Weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store. As our weather warms, the community is being warned about door-to-door -door salespeople. The Better Business Bureau is calling out magazine subscription fundraisers, saying that they're a total fake. To avoid getting scammed, expert advice, don't fall for high-pressure tactics, or feel sympathetic to kids saying that they're just trying to get into college ask to see a seller's license. If you're uncomfortable, call police, but some say don't totally turn them away. They could need help. They've been promised, you know, big savings. They get to travel the country. 
but in reality they're often say, staying you know 10 15 kids to a room if they don't make their sales quota they might not eat that day if you think the person at your door needs help call the national human trafficking hotline we'll have that number on your website our website rather as well as advice from the bbb and the national trafficking hotline number just go to valleynewslive.com and click on the hot button Gunshots rang through a Moorhead neighborhood this morning, and police are continuing to investigate this. Officers responded to a call about gunshots being fired just after 3 south of the MSUM campus. After searching the surrounding area, officers found four shell casings from a firearm. Police did interview people living in the area, and some reported hearing an unknown description of a vehicle with a loud muffler in the area around that same time. If you saw anything suspicious, Contact police right away. Nine days in jail for the man convicted of driving a Zamboni drunk. Stephen Anderson, who worked part-time for the Fargo Park District, could also serve his time at home with electronic home monitoring. The judge in the case also fined him $1,500. Anderson was arrested after spectators reported his erratic behavior during a girls' hockey game at the South Arena in January. His blood alcohol level, nearly four times the limit for driving. A Crookston man has been charged with raping an impaired girl. Matthew Storbachen faces first and second degree counts of criminal sexual conduct. He allegedly raped a girl who was under the age of 13 while she was unconscious. Police say Storbachen was arrested after he was seen walking away from a Crookston home carrying a bottle of whiskey. The victim was found unconscious in the driveway, apparently from drugs. Storbachen was scheduled to make his next court appearance. That's going to be June 29th. There certainly was a lot of commotion at Hector International Airport this morning, but it was nothing to worry about. It was simply a drill. A full-scale airport disaster simulation was held. This simulation used a school bus with 66 passengers on board and a crew of four. Now, that's similar to the number of types of occupants on an airplane. Federal regulators require these exercises to be done every three years. They also give first responders the chance to practice, just in case. And this is the first for the airport's new fire department. Well, the exercise was actually a little smaller than, than what we uh, have done in the past, and that's because of the transition with uh, the uh, guard firefighters going away. Uh, we lost 28 firefighters, and then uh, the airport started their own fire department uh, with only 10 personnel. So Here's some good news. The fire chief says today's exercise went very well. Minnesota's Governor Mark Dayton and House Republican leaders have tentatively agreed to a two-year school spending budget, making it less likely state government will shut down on July 1st. Dayton also says the sides are near an agreement on environment and agriculture spending. He says he won't call a special session to finish the legislature's work until he and the four legislative leaders agree on everything. U.S. Senator Rand Paul is teaming up with some Kentucky House members to push for public release of classified pages from a 2002 intelligence report on the 9-11 attacks. The U.S. government has not fully revealed what it knows about the financing of the attacks. Family members of 9-11 victims say they want access to a secret report. Lawmakers say the information inside the report relates to who financed 9-11 and points a strong finger at Saudi Arabia, exposing new details on the terrorism plot that killed nearly 3,000 people. It comes down to 28 pages. The members of Congress who read the redacted report say that they had to go to a special classified room to look at the document. I think we need to know where the real threats come from, who our enemies are, who our friends are, how terrorism is funded. And if the American public could see those 28 pages, they would know that much better. Those 28 pages were classified by President George W. Bush. Now the decision to declassify the report, that's up to President Barack Obama. The White House says it's reviewing the request. Well, coming up later on Valley News Live at 6, time to eat a little less than usual because you got to make some room for ribs at rib fest and there is a tornado watch in effect for our western counties until 10 o'clock i'll have hour by hour details on what you can expect in your forecast coming up right after this